As the government navigates this over the next months, new documents give us a better idea of the information politicians were getting as this was unfolding at the beginning of the year. For weeks, the risk to Canadians was deemed low. Today, the Prime Minister and Canada's Chief Public Health Officer were asked why the risk level wasn't raised earlier. Those days, the numbers of Canadians infected were still low, uh, but we saw the potential that we are in right now. At the beginning, there were fewer cases. The, this is a completely novel virus. We wanted to both uh, make, Canadi make sure that there were no panics on Canadians, while at the same time uh, getting people to take uh, more and more significant measures. Our um, risk assessments, but also our response uh, evolved, of course, as we know, learn more about the virus every day. As we look back, of course, there's going to be things we said, oh, we might have said this differently or that differently. There's going to be an awful lot of learning through this. We have the best chance of getting through this in the coming weeks and months by remaining uh, true to the advice that experts are giving us. As I mentioned, new documents give us a better idea of what information politicians, politicians rather, were using as the outbreak began to unfold at the beginning of the year. Those briefing notes show the government was told right until early March that the risk of transmission in this country was low. In January, officials told the health minister, based on the latest information that we have, there is no clear evidence that the virus is easily transmitted between people. A month later, bureaucrats, bureaucrats rather, warned against mandatory quarantine of travelers returning to Canada from Hubei province in China, where the virus started, writing that public health officials didn't have the capacity required to quarantine passengers from China. Also in February, officials knew provinces would be worried about the supply of personal protective equipment for healthcare workers, writing to the health minister, there were ongoing attempts to secure devices like N95 and surgical masks for the national stockpile, but deliveries were staggered by industry due to mounting market pressures. So what does this information tell us about what should inform the government's decisions going forward? Dr. Sandy Buckman is the president of the Canadian Medical Association and he's in Toronto. Hi, Dr. Buckman. Good to have you with us again. Thanks for inviting me. I want to start off on the issue of supply. Before we kind of look backwards at what the government knew when, can you tell me what you're hearing from your members about the personal protective equipment that they need and how much of it they have or don't have right now? So we're hearing from our members that they really don't know. And as a result, that's causing a lot of anxiety, additional anxiety that... Uh, they're experiencing even as they gear up to deal with the surge in patients uh, that are expected to come in. So we're hearing, for example, that uh, physicians in hospitals don't really know uh, how much equipment they have on hand. And we're hearing anecdotally from the hospitals that they may only have two or three days of equipment uh, on hand. Uh, that is specifically personal protective equipment. We're hearing from community-based physicians that uh, very few know how to access uh, that equipment, where to get it. We've also heard from them that um, many have tried to order the personal protective equipment from their usual suppliers, um, but only about 15% have received any confirmation that the equipment is coming. So the uncertainty that uh, where the equipment is in the pipeline, is it coming to them? Is it going to be there in time is causing a great deal of anxiety. What do you think is behind that uncertainty? Like, why don't we know how much we have? I think we're. I think the government is working really, really hard at uh, trying to procure as much equipment as possible. They're, you know, we're retooling factories uh, to to make a domestic supply. Um, that's really happening. They're importing uh, PPE from where whatever they can. But I don't think the information has been readily available, so it's not getting out there to the. Uh, frontline healthcare workers, to the hospital administrators, to the regional health authorities as to when it's coming, where is it in the pipeline. That makes it difficult to know where to deploy uh, the equipment. Um, we'd like to see it go to those areas that are in most need right now, but uh, the information, the full information to our knowledge is just not there yet. As I read through the briefing notes that my colleague J.P. Tasker reported on that were provided to the health minister, the supply issue really stuck out for me because that's something that we have talked about with frontline workers now for weeks, their, their concerns, the ones that you outlined. It sounds as though e even back in February there was, um, there was an awareness that there were issues in procuring these supplies. What are your impressions, I guess, of, uh, 
of what what the government knew when and and should there have been and should there be going forward more of a plan to deal with uh, the lack of supply? Well, I think uh, once it was realized that the pandemic was coming, uh, the government, the Public Health Agency of Canada went into gear. They used the best information they had at the time um, about what was coming. Uh, Italy really hadn't happened yet. Um, or what the Europe as a as a as this main center of the illness after China, so they were dealing with the best information they had at the time. But I don't think anyone really could have been prepared for the magnitude of this pandemic and the rapidity with with which it's descending upon us. Um, we were getting a lot of our information from the World Health Organization, for an example. They were trying to to manage it. Um, I don't think it's that useful to go back and saying we should have done this or we could have done that. In medicine, we often... Uh, we often say that's looking back with the retrospectoscope. We look back retrospectively and then we look at that, say, a chest x-ray and we see that lesion or the spot on the lung that we should have noticed before and now the person has a full bone cancer. Sometimes you just can't see it or you just don't have enough information to make a good judgment. So I think the important thing is um, they acted on the best information they had. They uh, were working uh, going forward to procure as much equipment as we can to get a domestic uh, supply manufactured to import where we can. And by pushing the message that we have to flatten the curve to spread out the infections over time so we don't overcome the system's capacity to care for patients is the is the best way forward. I think there will be time once uh, post-COVID happens, uh, perhaps later this year or next year, to look back and see what lessons have been learned and where we could have done better planning. Yeah, I asked not to assign blame, doctor, but but more so to figure out going forward what is the best uh, best plan of attack. And I, I mean that in so far as this isn't the first virus to hit Canada. There were warnings after SARS, for example, about ramping up the emergency stockpile. And I wonder what this experience tells us about that stockpile, the nature of it, or even the, the issue of supply when it comes to PPE moving forward. Yeah, I mean... We wouldn't be in this situation that we're in now, trying to get as much uh, uh, equipment, intensive care equipment, such as ventilators and PPP out, if we had been adequately prepared. Um, I think we do have something to learn. Uh, I see how prepared we are militarily. You know, our army is ready to go at any time. We have adequate equipment. We have jet fighters and submarines and tanks. We have the ability to get into uh, any zone and as peacekeeping nation and, you know, participate in enforcing the peace. Uh, we are really prepared and billions of dollars go into that. Um, the same should be true for, for dealing with the pandemic. We didn't stockpile sufficient equipment. Um, we weren't ready and hence the incredible effort that's being made right now. So I think uh, going forward, we will have to look back at the last few years. Um, we've had competing interests. You know, our healthcare system, uh, public health and healthcare is not getting the adequate funding that it needs. We don't have proper health human resource planning. Uh, Five million Canadians don't have access to a family doctor. We have problems with access for mental health and addictions or access for people in remote and rural communities. We never got virtual care up and going like we've been advocating until recently during this pandemic. So I think we, dealing with all these other important healthcare issues, we likely became complacent. And I think lessons learned going forward is that we have to be as prepared as possible, similar to the military for any future pandemic. In the same vein, before I let you go, I saw a headline that really jumped out at me today, and that is that more than 600 healthcare workers in Ontario have so far tested positive for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. what, what did you think when you saw that headline? I mean, it, it, uh, it's confirming our, our greatest fears, you know, that uh, these healthcare workers are the front lines and they are the, the people that are most at risk. And likewise, they can carry that back to their families. We need to protect them. Society has a reciprocal obligation to protect frontline healthcare workers who put themselves in harm's way. There's just no other way around it. Healthcare workers have rights. And if they become fearful, they may uh, exercise their rights not to uh, deliver care unless they have 
adequate personal protective equipment. And so the whole system will start to break down. Uh, that will place a greater burden on the remaining frontline healthcare workers and so on. They will experience mental and physical exhaustion and everything will spiral downward. So uh, it's really gravely concerning that so many have tested positive so early. We can only hope that uh, they will, the majority will do well and that we have adequate supply to treat them as we can all Canadians who develop this disease. Hence the important messaging of flattening the curve, staying home, washing hands, uh, remaining in isolation when, when we have to. Um, that's the best way that we can protect these frontline healthcare workers. Thanks, Dr. Buckman. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.